Okay, in general, I've already had some, let's say, contact with Czech basketball through the national teams. And also, when I was uh, in Kirka, we played against Nimburg and Prosteo back in 2010-11. I had, uh, I have been coaching, for example, Jan Veseli, uh, like 12, 13 years ago. Uh, also, Stefan Lichardowski. So I had some ideas how the basketball is but now uh, like I said it's my opinion is even higher nevertheless um, uh, there is not a coincidence that um, Czech Republic qualified for the world championship in China where the majority of the players on the national team are from uh, Czech League so and you have like let's say two NBA players one is playing now in uh, Fenerbahce and one uh, uh, in uh, NBA, so I think that uh, in general basketball is not uh, is on a pretty high level. For sure, uh, there is a, a difference because I grew up in Slovenia. I all my life I've been in Slovenia. This is my first time being out of Slovenia working, and. Um, there is also a barrier of the language, uh, but people here are really helpful, making a big effort to help us uh, to to overcome this language barrier. And also, my kids uh, are here going to school to to kindergarten, and everybody is so helpful and helping us. Uh, but other than that, that's not much difference other than the uh, language. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I started playing basketball when I was around 9 or 10 and I got, I got in love with basketball and uh, I finished around when I was 18 or, not, or 19 years old but all the time uh, when I was playing, my coach was saying to me, you should be a coach, you should be a coach, you should be coaching. And he always put me to be a captain of the team. I was always a captain of in, in, uh, in, in young age. And after, uh, let's say, when I finished playing basketball, after half a year, maybe one year, I was missing basketball. So I started coaching and step by step, uh, then I become uh, more serious coach. Uh, I started working with kids. Now I'm here in Nimburg, so uh, I really I am in love with basketball, and my my life is basketball. In uh, nature, I'm very competitive, and I found out that I, I'm not going to be able to play on the level I want to play so that's why I was a little bit disappointed myself and then I st stopped playing mostly because I'm very very competitive mm -hmm. it depends on what level you're working but in general uh, you work with people, so you need to to find a way how to how all all twelve or ten players or let's say five players on the court have the same idea. So they have one idea, same idea. And the second thing, uh, it's which is also challenging, is uh, how to improve players and uh, improve players. And through improving players, you improve also a team. And every coach. Uh, is happy to see the players he's coaching uh, improve and to see it on the court or the team that he's coaching that improves, uh, which is connected. So for me, this joy to see uh, people uh, around the, the court or on the court being happy be, for being uh, good at what they're doing, uh, it's for me, uh, let's say, the best part of coaching. I've been coach, let's say, for 20 years now, and uh, 
my knowledge of basketball is on the certain level that I can uh, I can uh, help uh, the team get better or get uh, to the point that they can achieve goals what they have uh, before the season so uh, being assistant coach especially here in Nimburg for me is the most the most important thing is to be a uh, right hand of the coach to help him do what, uh, whatever I can uh, to improve the team improve uh, the 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 way we look on the court so if this is if this means that I we have to analyze the teams that uh, we have to work on the court harder or to to uh, fill the coach with ideas how to make the team better or how to make uh, our performance uh, better uh, these are the things that uh, the most important thing because I also also been a head coach so for me is uh, the most important thing is that the coach needs needs to know how to adapt to the situation uh, whether it's on the, in the office or in the court uh, with the players in the game or in the practice no, nothing in particular uh, because my first contact was when he was only 17 years old and uh, we, he was uh, in Ljubljana, in Slovan Ljubljana, playing for the junior uh, junior teams. I uh, recruited him for, the, or I pulled him in the, the senior team. Uh, he already then he showed that he's a big talent, amazing talent. Uh, nevertheless, he was playing Adriatic League, which is I consider to be a very strong league. He was playing already some minutes there at the age of 17 uh, we chose uh, we chose uh, what kind of talent he was but let's say the most important the most uh, important thing or the thing that uh, is uh, going regarding to him is uh, his energy he put on the court his athleticism and energy First of all, I have to point out that we really make a great success uh, in the Eurobasket 2017, where we won, we won the title, uh, which was amazing experience uh, for not for only for uh, for the team, but as an, uh, for the nation. I think it was the the big the biggest uh, achievement of team sport in Slovenia in general, not only in basketball. So uh, we were very happy and enthusiastic after this. And after the Eurobasket, uh, we it's tough for the coaches who work for, with the national teams to to find the the team that they're gonna uh, tolerate uh, two month absence from the team because basically you're out for two months. Uh, maybe the most important part of a uh, period of the preparation so I had some uh, talks with the teams before the Eurobasket uh, but uh, we didn't find the mutual agreement so after the Eurobasket there was no no let's say uh, opportunities uh, basically the teams are not looking for the coaches at that time and uh, then the call come uh, came from uh, Nimburg and fa very quickly we found uh, the way to cooperate and and I'm I'm really happy that this happened first I think the most important thing is that uh, what's the best for the head coach uh, he needs to find the, the people around him to 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 make him uh, work at his best and Oren proved in these uh, two years that he is a great coach amazing coach uh, knowing how to uh, 
push the players uh, to to be to show their maximum, which is not easy to go this uh, through through whole season, like because there is a lot of games. And uh, for me, for sure, it's uh, challenging uh, to help the coach and to be someone who is uh, trying to uh, pull him down or try to make him a little bit uh, not so nervous <laughs> at some points. Uh, I'm trying to to uh, be to to step back and uh, watch the game from the ad other angle that the coach sees it, so I can help him more. Uh, and I think so far uh, we had uh, had uh, successful cooperation. I'm very happy that I can uh, work with uh, Oren, uh, with uh, which he proved that he is, uh, let's say, one of the uh, let's say new newcomers on the coaching uh, coaching uh, market. Okay, uh, I was fortunate enough in my career that I could I could wa I could work with the uh, amazing coaches. Uh, uh, one of them is Igor Kokoshko, who made a great, not a great, amazing result with the national team, and he's now a NBA coach, uh, like a head coach. But uh, nevertheless, I worked also with the uh, legend Boja Markovic. Who is he? Who has proven to be uh, also a coach, one of the best coaches in Europe. So this for sure helped me to become even better, to see uh, how uh, to see different styles, different approaches, and uh, that uh, that uh, helped me to 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 build my philosophy. I spent with Doncic with the, or with the national team uh, that summer uh, around two months, maybe, yeah, around two months. And it's hard to say about Doncic something that uh, hasn't been said. Uh, first of all, he's amazing. Uh, person, he has amazing personality. Uh, he knows how to handle media, and we have to know that at that time he was only 18 years old. He knows how to handle pressure, and he knows how to uh, to work with teammates. Uh, not only on the court, and off the court as well. So, besides this, he's an amazing player, amazing talent. Uh, again, with this age, he's done so many things. So it's really, really amazing. I would say his strongest asset, his strongest asset for sure is his versatility, basketball versatility. He can score in a number of ways. He can keep his teammates busy with amazing passes, great passes, passes that nobody expects him to pass. He can rebound the ball. He can push the ball in offense. He can play defense. So his versatility is his biggest asset. I think. First of all, Luca surprises everybody every year. Uh, if you go back to when he was 16 with his first game with for Real Madrid, when he, on his first match he scored a three-point shot, when nobody expected him to do this, and uh, every year uh, people uh, would find some flaws in his game to say maybe he's not at this level, that level, but every year he surprises everybody. Starting with uh, 2017 Eurobasket when we won uh, the the title and he was in uh, best five uh, among the best five players of the tournament, and then he continued this year with the Euroleague title and MVP title. So nobody expected him to be on this level already at this age, and uh, there were many questions about his uh, NBA career, how he's gonna start there. Uh, 
people were uh, very, uh, let's say, they were not certain what's going to happen. But then, when the season started, when the lights ter turn on, uh, he just, I think he impressed everybody, whole world. And uh, I just cannot imagine his career uh, after five years when they say uh, the best age for the player is around 27. So I hope he's going to keep surprising us. It's, I don't like this comparison uh, in general for any players, not for him, but for anyone who is the best and who is second best. He's unique and uh, that you can tell when you watch him. Uh, so I'm really happy, I'm looking forward to see how, how his career is going to continue because I think uh, there are some amazing stuff, amazing things waiting uh, for him. Uh, and it's some amazing stuff uh, for us to see. First of all, Luca is a, is a great guy, great personality, always positive, always uh, trying uh, to compete in whatever we do, whatever we did on the practice, he wanted to compete. So he is very comp competitive, obvious. And uh, he, even when he's, uh, even if he sh sits on the bench, on the break, on the practice, he will uh, shoot uh, sitting, and he will try to bet if he, he's gonna make it or not. Uh, but uh, maybe one story that's interesting, not that funny, but is very interesting, is that uh, when we had like a preparation camp before Eurobasket 2017 uh, in a preparation games Luca was uh, not that good at free throws he was shooting around 50 percent which is not good uh, for the guard and um, at some point I come to him and I tell him Luca we need to do something about your free throws we need to work on this because it's not good for you or for the team to shoot the free throws around 50%, so we need to practice. And he looks at me and says, come on coach, don't worry. At Eurobasket, I will make free throws. <laughs> and he was shooting uh, way, way, way uh, above 80% at the Eurobasket. So that shows how, how confident he is in, in what he's doing, but being only 18, so that's why this is so, so interesting for me. Yeah. Not only Luca, I think we had a, a very good team. Yeah. Uh, we have to talk about, uh, when we talk about Slovenian national team, we have to talk about Goran Dragic. We have to talk about uh, maybe Anthony Rand Randolph or uh, some other players that made this team very important, very good. Uh, and the biggest uh, asset of this national team was uh, amazing chemistry between the players. And we had two great leaders, uh, Doncic and uh, especially Goran Dragic, which I think was the best, the best performance uh, he ever uh, had on one tournament. So I think it was like more of... Uh, like a team, team chemistry with two great players. Mm -hmm. well, for sure, I knew quite quite some players. Uh, we played, like I said before, we played against uh, Nimburg and Prostojov uh, in the past. And we also played against national team. Uh, two times in Eurobasket, uh, so I knew, for example, I knew Hruban, I knew Pumperla, uh, Peter Benda, and also Gino Lawrence, who is not Czech, but I, because we played against him when he was in Prostojov. So there are some players I already knew, and uh, I was, back then, when we played against them, I, I was impressed uh, of how they play, and 
now when I see him every day on the practice, I know why they are so good at what they do. From the players, Nimburg for sure, Peter Benda, it's no question. Because with his uh, attitude on the practice, on every practice, there is not a single practice that he has a bad day. And uh, the, the way he prepares for every game, the, the, the level of concentration. The, so I think he is the example for every, for every young player to watch Peter Benda how to, to be a professional. I think this is uh, something that uh, people don't appreciate a lot. I think uh, Oren is doing an amazing job with the team, especially on this mental part, which is the most important when you when you win so many games in Czech uh, championship. So I think he's doing a great job mentally preparing the player, uh, make, making the players fresh and also sharp and competitive enough to perform on every game. Because uh, we don't underestimate any opponent at any game. So we prepare for every game almost the same. Maybe the tough schedule uh, uh, makes us do some less things on preparation. But uh, mentally, I think uh, Oren is doing here amazing job. Basketball is my life, so uh, when I'm home we watch basketball, when I'm in the office I watch basketball, So, but professionally let's say uh, when we are uh, preparing for some opponent, let's say in Champions League, I spend between 8 to 12 hours just uh, watching the games and then is also preparing the, uh, doing some notes, preparing the, uh, the reports and video for the players it takes a lot of time so especially in the beginning of the season it's very tough first three months when you meet new teams with new coaches with new players to to put out the main things and to try to put them in a, in some package for the players and the coach uh, to understand the team it's tough as the season goes to the end we know we, we we know teams more, so we spend less time on the opponents and we spend more time on our team. But basically, yeah, it's it's very tough. It's uh, it's a lot of a lot of hours <laughs> watching games. For sure, this area here, Tirshak, because. Uh, my family and I, we like we are like outdoors. We like to move a lot, uh, and uh, here in Tirshak, it's a uh, amazing nature, amazing park, uh, surrounded with water, uh, multiple sports options. Uh, I walk a lot through through Tirshak. Uh, it helps me relax, to be connected with the nature. So if I have to pick one place, it's for sure Tirshak. <laughs>